Hey guys, this is uh, part 2 of the tutorial on fluorescence in solvent. So in part 1 we looked at the uh, excitation of acetaldehyde in ethanol and today we will compute the um, emission energy as uh, acetaldehyde loses um, its energy and goes down to ground state um, and we will see um, what are the important steps to get the right numbers here. So the steps to compute the entire cycle um, are listed here and the inputs for these calculations are provided on the Gaussian website. So if you want to just copy paste those, that could do the trick. And I will just quickly explain what the keywords are and what are the little uh, caveats and tricks. We will start by uh, step four, where we calculate the um, ener the energy of the system as it is in its excited state, uh, in equilibrium, so where both the acetaldehyde and ethanol are in uh, are um, in their excited state, so everything has time to um, adjust itself and we will verify that we got the right geometry by, use, uh, by doing a frequency calculation as step 5. Then we will um, have to follow um, the graph here and compute a non-equilibrium uh, state where acetaldehyde is in ground state, however the solvent didn't have time to adjust itself yet, so it's still in excited state. And that will uh, be done in two steps, as step 6 and 7, where first we will compute the solvent in excited state, and then we will use um, that solvent in order to compute how the acetaldehyde um, will uh, be while uh, in ground state itself, but surrounded with solvent in excited state. And that is a non-equilibrium calculation. Uh, using these two um, outputs, we will be able to compute the energy of emission. So, let's start by step 4. We will um, use the uh, input keywords provided by Gaussian in their user manual. So uh, here the important part is that we use um, the check uh, point file 2 which was uh, created in part 1 of um, this uh, tutorial series um, and we will use it as input for this step 4. So in order to do that, just a quick reminder, what happens in this case um, is if the keyword old checkpoint doesn't work for you, what you have to do is create a um, renamed copy of checkpoint 2 uh, and name it as uh, 4 and uh, provide it here uh, as keyword. So at the beginning of the calculation, uh, Gaussian will read in the information that is stored there, and that would be the information um, outputted in step two. However, by the end of the calculation, what happens is that this file will be over overwritten with new information coming from the output of, ste of step four. So in the end, you will have um, new info in there, which is what we want. Uh, also pay attention to this keyword. We will modify the geometry from uh, step two uh, in order to break the symmetry. And this will be done by um, changing two torsions in our input geometry, as so. Um, these numbers were provided by Gaussian, so I didn't try to change them in any way because this is not exactly the point of this tutorial, but you guys can play around and maybe um, see for yourselves if there are better numbers. Um, 
but in short, uh, basically, if you provide this modify keyword, then you're allowed to change certain parameters of the input geometry um, in your input file while keeping everything else as is from before. Uh, so here, the output of uh, this step uh, is an optimized um, geometry and um, this gives us basically um, this answer here, but we don't know exactly whether uh, this confirmation of acetaldehyde is actually a stationary point, meaning that it is not a transition state of some sort. And for um, to make sure that this is really the case, we need to do a frequency calculation, and that is step five for which we provide um, the checkpoint file 4 as input and instead of doing an optimization we actually do a frequency calculation. The output of this file looks like so. So here you will notice that um, the geometry of acetaldehyde has been changed and it's a bit like crooked, right? I don't know if you can see it well or not. I'll turn off the labels. Like this. It's probably easier. So it's not exactly as pretty as it is in ground state. It has a certain uh, weird angle to it. However, when we look at the frequency calculated, none of them are imaginary. Therefore, we are at a stationary um, point, and so this is not um, a transition state. Okay, so now that we know that, um, we will be able to go on to step four, uh, step six, I'm sorry. And in step six and seven, we're basically doing what we did in steps 3.1 and 3.2. Uh, but as two separate inputs. Uh, so first we calculate um, the solvent as in excited uh, state and then we compute the acetaldehyde in ground state while surrounded by solvent in excited state. Um, so here um, don't forget this non-equilibrium right which is um, in step 6 and we use this non-equilibrium read in step 7 to obtain the correct um, solvent um, and the output of these um, files is as follows so in step 6 you will get uh, this line um, practically at the end 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 of the file which says uh, after PCM corrections the energy is minus 153 something 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 atomic units and in step 7 you will get something like SCF done that would be the last one and you get this energy as the last SCF now to get the energy of emission we will have to subtract the energy obtained in step 6 um, uh, and the energy obtained in step 7 and we will get uh, 0 0.115 ish atomic units which converted into energy um, electron volts will be 3.13 now the energy of the excited state that we got from step 4, which was the first thing that we did, would have been for the first excited state as 3.2. Uh, so we're off by around 0.7 uh, electron volts, which is not much, but you know, for some uh, applications could be a crucial difference. Um, so uh, all in all, it's kind of a quick fly through, but the all important um, steps were really summarized in part one. So take a look at that and um, 
never forget that your solvent usually affects um, maybe not tremendously but still does affect your system so if you have the computational power to take those things into account um, do so and uh, be careful with what you compute uh, so on that I think I'm done and uh, Merry Christmas to everyone who's celebrating and uh, Happy New Year <laughs> for everybody and I'll see you in the next year.